Good evening. I invite you to please stand for the confession and forgiveness as found in your bulletin. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Loving and forgiving God, we confess that we are held captive by sin. In spite of our best efforts, we have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O God. Wake us up and turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. People of God, hear this good news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven and you are free. Free from all that holds you back and free to live in the peaceful realm of God. May you be strengthened in God's love, comforted by Christ's peace, and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Till 
We praise you, O God, for this evergreen crown that marks our days of preparation for Christ's advent. As we, light, as we light the first candle on this wreath, rouse us from sleep to watch for the light of your Christ when he comes with all the saints and angels. Enlighten us with your grace and prepare our hearts to welcome him with joy. Grant this through Christ our Lord, whose coming is certain and whose day draws near. Amen. I invite you to be seated. Well, welcome to Abiding Presence Lutheran Church, a place of grace. All are welcome. Our mission here is to seek God and serve others. I want to invite you to make plans to join our Advent Adventure Christmas Carols and Crafts this coming Saturday, December 5th from 10 to 12. This will be both in person in the outdoor chapel as well as online with video instructions. More information and sign up is available on our new website, aplc.org. On Sunday, December 6th at 4 o'clock, we have our Christmas concert featuring our bells of praise and our chapel chimers sharing favorite carols on handbells, chimes, and keyboard. You're going to need to make a reservation to come to this concert. You can also do that on our new website, aplc.org. And also, Noel's at Noon begins this coming Thursday uh, for three weeks over Thursday at 12 o'clock on the dot. You're going to have a 30-minute concert over the lunch hour bringing some of the most beautiful sounds of the season. Feel free to bring a lunch if you'd like to, so you can join others in the outdoor chapel uh, for a social distanced meal. I want to thank everyone for all the love that you all shared um, with Transplants for Children during Thanksgiving for all the baskets that were delivered. And we continue our support for this mission partner with the Christmas Giving Tree. Ornaments are available in the church hallway. I invite you to stop by there to pick one up. Each has different information about a gift that's needed for a family. We also are going to need drivers to deliver gifts when they're all collected. And you can look for more details online on our new website at aplc.org. To accommodate everyone and to ensure that we maintain COVID safety regulations, Abiding Presence has decided to have five worship services on Christmas Eve. Eve. They're going to be at 3, 5, 7, 9, and 11. Real easy to remember. But the first two, the 3 and the 5 o'clock services are going to be oriented more toward families, and we're going to have these outside. So we're going to worship in the outdoor chapel with stories, songs, and stickers. Oh, stickers. You got to come and check that out. The 7 o'clock and the 9 o'clock service will take place inside the sanctuary with a more traditional liturgy and a string quartet. And the 11 o'clock is our uh, acoustic Christmas uh, worship service with a scaled-down worship band. Reservations uh, are needed for these services. You can make those online at our new website, aplc.org. 
And as you can see, Abiding Presence continues to seek God and serve others in safe ways. And we are busy. There's a lot of great things that are going on in, in the church, but we need you and we need your service. Please consider sharing your time serving on a worship support team uh, so we can continue the ministry and mission of this place of grace. And now let us turn our attention to the hearing of God's word. Reading from Isaiah, chapter 64, beginning at verse 1. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, and no eye has seen any God besides you, who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry, and we sinned, because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our inequities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our inequity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O oh Lord, and do not remember inequity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. Word of God, word of life. lambs we crave your care what strength from you can earth afford what mercies can compare lord come soon come to save us lord come soon Our selfish prayers deserve your wrath, our pride a sudden burst. We have but souls to serve as bread and tears to quell our thirst. Lord, come soon, come to save. Restore to us a saving faith, the radiance of your face. To life 
right and to reveal the gift of your redeeming grace. Lord, come soon, come to save us. Lord, come soon. Reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, beginning at verse 3. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Word of God, word of life. Well, hello and good evening, and, and to those online, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, we are all in that time of the year right now where Christmas decorations are going up. So just those that are here, show of hands, how many of y'all have already decorated your house for Christmas? Anybody completed it? Oh, we got a few people that have already done it. How many of you all are going to start like this weekend? Yeah, there you go. We're, we're, we're like that at our family too, you know, once Thanksgiving is over... It's Christmas. It's time. And, and uh, if you're like us, we set everything up all on the same day. The lights go out in the house. The tree goes up. And then slowly, 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 as, as presents get bought, they start going under the tree. Um, uh, do you all wait until like Christmas morning to have all the presents there? Or do you just, you know, wrap them and just put them under as you get them? Is that, kind of put them under as you get them? Yeah, kind of as they go. It's kind of fun when that happens because you keep watching them kind of grow out a little bit, a little bit more and more. How many of y'all sneak around to read the tags to find out which one's yours? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We all, we all do. It's kind of exciting to think, oh, I wonder what's in that gift. That one's big. That one's small. I bet it's powerful. Yeah, I mean, we all like to go and, and, and kind of peek and, and peer around. Um, uh, when I was a kid, I'd start shaking them, and my, my dad would always say, you never know. I mean, it could be glass. You might break it. Whatever is inside. You know, he would always didn't want me touching the presents, you know, and I, I remember just staring at them and wanting to see what was inside and, and waiting with great anticipation about what's inside this gift. And I watch my kids now kind of do the same thing. I'll watch my son. He'll walk around the tree and just kind of look, and, and uh, every once in a while, he'll move one to see, and then he'll be, get a little excited because he'll notice his name's on one. That sense of anticipation about opening those gifts on Christmas morning is really exciting. And I don't think it leaves us when we're just kids. I think we still have that, don't we? I think we all kind of feel that sense of anticipation. What did they get me? What did she get me? What did he get me? Yeah, uh, what did the kids get me? And, and, and we all get excited about that. And I bring that up because Advent is a time for that same feeling and that same emotional response like a kid looking at Christmas presents, waiting for that day to happen when they can tear into it and find out what's inside. We are waiting. We are preparing ourselves. We are anticipating the coming of Christ. Not only the coming of Christ as the baby born in Bethlehem, but we are preparing ourselves for the coming of Christ when Christ will come to take us home. And the Gospel of Mark today is going to talk to us about this a little bit. Are we able to do that with that same hope-filled anticipation like that child looking at that Christmas gift? For me, I'm hoping I can do that because a lot of times it's a little scary to think about the end times. But Mark's challenging us today to maybe, maybe think about it from the perspective of, of, of flipping that tag and seeing, oh, it's to me, because that's what Christ is. Let's all stand now and let's sing together the gospel acclamation.
The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, in those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. And the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also... When you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth may pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about the day or the hour, no one knows. Neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey, and when he leaves home, he puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to be seated. Well, welcome to the season of Advent, the time to prepare for the coming of Christ. And yes, we are preparing for the Christ child, the babe born in Bethlehem. But the Gospel of Mark reminds us that this baby grows to be a man and promises to return after his death and resurrection and take us home. So while we are decorating trees and stringing lights and baking cookies and buying those gifts, preparing for Christmas morning today, we are asked... Are we preparing the same way for the coming of the Son of Man? Do we watch with uh, do we watch for his coming with the same hope and anticipation as we watch the Advent wreath light up week after week? Do we keep watch looking for Christ in others? Do we watch for opportunities to be Christ-like with others? We don't know when Christ will come back, but we do know. That Christ will. And this is not something that we should be afraid of. No, this is cause for that same hope-filled anticipation. Like the child that stares at those gifts under the tree. Keep watch. Christ is coming. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. Take any doubt and fear we may have and turn us toward faith and confidence this Advent. As we wait for your return, help us to show you to all that we encounter. May we serve others with your grace, mercy, and forgiveness. Amen. Stephen Covey is uh, an author and inspirational speaker and, and, and did the seven habits for highly effective people. And he's quoted with saying, begin with the end in mind. And Advent is kind of like that. It's, it's the beginning of the church year. We've just begun the church year. Happy New Year, right? Uh, but the first lesson that we have is about end times. So they're pointing right away to what's going to happen. And it's important because we know what happens in the end. Christ will come and Christ will take us all home. We just don't know when or how. And Mark gives us some clues through his little apocalyptic verses here. Bless you. And remember last week that we learned about apocalypse. Uh, Stephen reminded us apocalypse means unveiling or revealing. I heard someone else say it's like heavenly secrets using earthly terms. So Mark is sharing with us and, and, he, and he talks about a darkened sun and a lightless moon and falling stars. And then the coming of the Son of Man with power and glory, sending angels out to collect us from every nook and cranny. And it'd be very easy to read this as get ready because things are about to get really dark and terrible. I mean, so dark that the sun and the moon aren't going to be seen. The stars are going to fall on our heads. And then at some point, Jesus is going to come like a hero to save us. 
And that kind of scares me when I think about it from that perspective, because that sounds like I'm going to have to endure a great suffering to come. I mean, we're already kind of suffering as it is. Some of us are dealing with amazing sufferings, whether it's mental or physical or, or spiritual suffering. Some of it is self-perpetuated. Some of it is self-imposed. Sometimes it's unwanted suffering, or you're suffering for reasons that you just don't know. We even cause suffering in others by things that we have done or have left undone. I've felt it before, and I've witnessed in others to be in that place where it just feels so dark, like the sun will not shine. So maybe what Mark is describing here is, are things that we are already currently dealing with. So keep watch. And then all of a sudden he changes course and starts talking about this fig tree. Right in the middle of this lesson is this, sprouts up this fig tree. And it seems out of place after all this scary, dark imagining. And because it seemed out of place, I, I decided I wanted to look into that one a little bit more. I was drawn to the fig tree all week long. And, uh, and I found out there's a lot of different references of the fig tree throughout the Bible. In creation, it's the third tree that's listed. There's your Jeopardy question. It's the third tree that's listed because it's the, the, the leaf that gets used for clothing. For the Israelites, they used it for food and for comfort and for shade and for building. And this is not the first time that Mark talks about the fig tree. If you look just a few chapters before our lesson today, you might remember that Jesus curses a fig tree that does not bear fruit. And this tree, this fig tree, ends up withering and dying. And scholars look at this as the old ways have passed away, and there's something new that's coming. This is transition between having Israelites and Gentiles, Jews and Gentiles, to now all being one with God. Later, his disciples would see this withered fig tree, and he would tell them to have faith in God. You can do anything. You can tell that mountain to go swimming, and it'll do it. You can just have faith in God. You can do anything. So when Jesus speaks about the fig tree in our lesson today, he says, As soon as its branches become tender and put forth leaves, you know it's time. And I think what Jesus is getting at is that once we start to live in such a way that loves all the way that God loves all, if we live in such a way that shares faith selflessly with others, a faith that can move mountains the way that God does through Christ, if we live in such a way that others cannot help but see the love of Christ shining through us, then leaves will grow and the fruit will be abundant and we will have done what God has yearned for us to do since those same leaves were used as clothing. So keep watch. Not necessarily for those signs of plagues and death and destruction and despair. Keep watch for opportunities to share the love of God with others. Keep watch for Christ staring back at you through the eyes of all those masked faces. Keep watch because it's not a test that we have to pass or get right at the sound of the last trumpet. Keep watch because God is present right now in you and in me Emmanuel, God with us, never absent, always calling, constantly making the divine presence known. Keep watch, not fearful of some potential suffering, but with hope-filled anticipation because we know Christ will come. This is the same Christ that was with God as light separated darkness. The same Christ who joined humanity as a baby born in the most unexpected place to the most unlikely couple. The same Christ who walked among us, lived like us, and experienced human suffering to the point of death. The same Christ that was resurrected after three days and gave us the Holy Spirit and promises to return again and take us home. And we're just called to keep Watch with joy-filled hope and excited anticipation for this Christ's return is the greatest gift that we will ever receive. Keep watch. Amen.
Let us boldly confess our faith through the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God of power and might, tear open the heavens and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. Holy God, we pray for the ministry we share in Christ's name. Open our hearts to your call for justice, peace, and healing. Attune us to the needs of the world as you draw near. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for our planet in need of restoration, for devastated habitats, polluted waters, blazing fires, swelling floods, and long-lasting droughts. Revive the health of our earth and our relationship to it. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Father, we pray for all people who care for others in our community and around the world. Fill them with compassion and the power to respond with justice for those who are oppressed, with welcome for those who are excluded, and with relief for those who suffer. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for people who are in crisis as the seasons change for those without homes facing severe weather, for those who are unemployed or underemployed, and for those in poverty or facing food insecurity. Relieve their burdens, sustain their bodies, and ease their minds. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the people in our families and congregation who live with depression, anxiety, chronic pain, addiction, and other invisible illnesses. Draw near to all who are ill and all who are dealing with the coronavirus. We pray, too, for those names in our hearts this evening we may now choose to say out loud or silently. Wes, Pam, Carly, Cindy Rich. Ease their suffering and support them where they struggle. Hear us, O God. Lord, you bring triumph from tragedy, joy from sorrow, life from death. Comfort all who grieve the passing of a loved one, especially the family and loved ones of Joanne Wolfe, that they may take comfort in the certainty we all shall be reunited in your kingdom. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let's share a sign of peace with those around us. For those at home, please text someone right now. Peace be with you. Dave, peace be with you. I invite you to be seated. Keeping watch isn't something to be scared of. It's more 
about living our life in that hope-filled anticipation of Christ's second coming. We know how the story ends with the cross and the resurrection. We also know how our story ends with the grave and eternal life. What we do until then is entirely up to us. Sharing our gifts and experiencing and multiply to serve others is one way that abiding presence keeps watch. Thank you all for your continued generosity. Let us pray. Generous God, you have created all that is, and you provide for us in every season. Bless all that we offer, that through these gifts, the world will receive your blessing. In the name of Jesus Emmanuel, we pray. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, and it should for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this. For the remembrance of me. Gathered as one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. All is made ready, and all are welcome to taste and see that God is good. At this time, I invite you to take your wafer out of the bag, and we will all commune together. This is the body and blood of Jesus Christ given and shed for you. Amen. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and abundant God, you have done great things for us, and we rejoice. In this bread and cup, you give us life forever. In your boundless mercy, strengthen us and open our hearts to the world's needs. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
Amen. Amen. And now receive the blessing. The creator of the stars bless you. Bless your advent waiting. The long expected savor fill you with love. The unexpected spirit guide your journey now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, prepare the way for the Lord. Thanks be to God.